Hi, this is Zach Henderson, Assistant Product Manager for the Exos Online at YSI, and I'm here today to talk about the new Core Exo version 2 software. Now this is the latest software for interfacing with your Exosons, and you'll find it has many differences from the last version of the Core software. So first and foremost, I'm going to start with the home screen. Now this is the screen that you'll see whenever you boot up the software and it has quick links to popular functions as well as our instrument connection panel here on the right. Now This is where you'll see any device that you want to connect to the software. You can connect via USB cable or via Bluetooth. For today's demonstration I'm going to connect an XO3 SON via Bluetooth. So I click scan for Bluetooth devices. I also want to make sure that I see the blue solid light on my XO SON. That light indicates that the instrument is discoverable and ready for connection. And there it is. I'm going to click connect. And again it just takes a brief moment to load here. Now while it's connecting it's checking the QC of the sound. And as you can see the first thing brought up is this smart QC notification letting us know that one or more of our sensors needs attention. In addition to this notification, we see this red status bar and also the red dashboard with an X uh, on the QC score here on the bottom right. Now the engineers really tried to make it as obvious as possible if something needs addressed, if a sensor needs attention or if something needs replaced. Anytime there's a QC error, uh, the status bar and this dashboard will be red, so you'll know right away that something needs addressed. So uh, looking at the dashboard here at the bottom, we see that QC score. We also see the free memory, which in this case is completely empty, completely free. Also our battery level of the SOND, the SOND status, the averaging mode, and also the SOND serial number that is connected. So let's see if we can figure out what's going on with this QC score. I'm going to go back down to this red X and go ahead and click on that. And it's going to take us to the Instruments and Sensors menu. Now this screen is where you'll find any devices connected to the Core Exo software. Starting with the host device, which is the Exo3 SOND, and all the sensors that are connected to that SOND. Now if we click the SOND itself, we can adjust uh, any SOND specific settings such as the ID, the date and time, averaging mode, It'll also give us an indication of the used space, and we can view all logged data files to the SOND. Now since this is a brand new SOND, there are no logged files, but this is where we'd go to manually download data to the software, and also delete records from the SOND. But as we can see, all the sensors look good except for that PHORP sensor, so let's click that to investigate and we can see there the red X for an X calibration reminder and it's letting us know that we need to calibrate now. Now it also gives us some other information calibration reminders for ORP and a next sensor module replacement reminder and when we do replace that sensor module it gives us the option to select the date that that module was replaced and then it will auto update the next sensor module replacement reminder to the appropriate date. Also while we're on the screen I want to point out this is where you'll go to update the instrument firmware. So when a new firmware is released online you can click this button and it will update the firmware for the SOND and any sensors connected. We also have a link to that manage handheld button. And this button is used for connecting to the older uh, big blue handheld. So back to pH, it's letting us know we need to calibrate that now. So I'm going to go to the calibration menu here. And again, we can see all sensors connected and available for calibration. Everything looks good except for the pH ORP. Now ORP was calibrated, but it looks like pH hasn't been calibrated since it left the factory. So I'm going to go ahead and click the calibrate button. And this is going to take us right into the calibration menu. In fact, we can see the pH standard value is auto-populated. I currently have the SON submerged in a 7 standard. 
and we can see our pre and post calibration values as well as our raw millivolts and temperature and also carried over from the last version of the software is the data stability indicator. So right now it's looking stable. If it were red and were unstable, we would want to wait for that data to stabilize. Also a new feature for this software, on the left you'll find calibration tips. And these tips will be tailored to any sensor that you are calibrating. So if we have turbidity or conductivity calibrating, you'll have specific tips for those parameters. Now since I've had this sensor submerged in 7 buffer, it is pretty stable, the millivolts look good. I'm going to go ahead and apply the calibration. Okay, so calibration point 1, and this is a little preview showing our pre-calibration value. It looks like our post has been corrected to 7.0, uh, our millivolts. Now at this point, if we were just doing a single calibration, we could complete the calibration and we would be finished. But since this is pH, we recommend doing at least a two-point calibration. So I'm going to add another calibration point. Okay, so I've moved the sensor from the 7 buffer to the 10 buffer, rinsing in between, of course. And we can see here that our line has jumped from the 7 to the 10, and we're just waiting for that line to stabilize. Okay, and it appears our readings have stabilized, so I'm going to apply the calibration. And now we have our calibration point 2 listed. Again, we can see our pre-calibration value, our post has been corrected to 10, our millivolts. So at this point we could complete the calibration, but let's say we don't know what the expected pH range is in the field. We better be safe and add one more calibration point. So I'm going to add a third calibration point and submerge the sensor into the pH 4 buffer solution, again rinsing in between. So I've submerged the pH sensor into the 4 buffer solution, and now we can see our line drop down to the 4, or getting close to the 4, and starting to flatten out. Again, we want to make sure we wait for it to stabilize. However, I'm going to go ahead and click Apply before we reach stability. And it's going to give me a warning saying the sensor is unstable. Now if we click OK, it's going to continue the calibration, but we have not achieved stability. So it's going to give us this red unstable. I did this to demonstrate a new feature for the Core Exo version 2 software, and that's the ability to redo calibration points. This is a very valuable feature, especially when it comes to pH calibration, where if you accidentally mess up the last calibration point, before using the old software, you would have to restart the whole calibration all over again. Now we have the option to just redo that one calibration point, and it takes us back to our pH 4. So now we are free to go ahead and click to apply this calibration. And now we have stable, stable, stable for all three calibration points. So now we can complete the calibration. And that brings us to our calibration summary screen. Here we can review all the calibration points. It also shows us our smart QC, which is turned to a green check mark. And we now have the ability to add notes that are tied to the calibration. And then hit enter. And now we see that our status bar has turned from red to green and all of our sensors are green, and our QC score is updated to a green check mark, which lets us know that we are ready to start taking measurements. But before we leave this screen, I wanted to point out some more new features added to this software. First off, we have this new ability to manage our sensor reminders. If you click that, it'll give us access to all possible sensors, and we can actually set calibration reminders for them. So right now we have a calibration interval for pH set for 30 days. But you can adjust this based on your organization's requirements. So I'm going to update this to 14 days. Every two weeks we'll get an alert to recalibrate pH. And we can do the same thing for ORP. 
click apply. And so the next time you connect to the software, if 14 days have passed, an alert will come up to let you know that you need to calibrate pH again. Now I also want to show you how to pull up calibration records. You can click this button and view all previous calibration records stored on the PC. The most recent is listed at the bottom, which was our PHORP sensor calibration. And new to this version of Core is the ability to select and view multiple calibration records simultaneously. So I'm going to click a few more parameters here and view those calibration records. So we have this nifty calibration records panel here on the left where we can view each of those records. And again, we have the ability to add notes to these records. Now once we click Save, that note is going to be permanently tied to this calibration record. You cannot go back and delete it. Now we can export these calibration records all together in one CSV file to view in Excel. So I'm going to click that, save it, pull up Excel, and now we can view the calibration records for dissolved oxygen, specific conductance, turbidity, and there's that note we just added, as well as our pH calibration. Now the software is going to notify us that the data was successfully exported. So I'm going to click OK. And now let's view some live data. It's going to start us off in the dashboard screen here where we see the data in a grid view. This is the default view for all enabled parameters. And here we can adjust the sample interval, which is currently set to one second. We can initiate the wiper. And when we click that, we see a wiping in progress notification. We can save a single data point or start logging data continuously at the sample interval that is set. And we can also log that data to a specific site. Now we can visualize the data in graph form or we can switch to a more traditional table view. And this is similar to how data from the 6 series sounds were displayed using EcoWatch software. Now for those of you who use your SONs for unattended deployments, let's go to the deployment screen. On the deployment screen, we can open a template that's saved to our PC. We can pull a template that's on the SON currently. We can create a new template from scratch. We can also create a new site or manage our existing sites. So let's run through setting up a deployment. I'm going to create a new template. adjust the logging interval, give it a file name prefix, select my site, and also pick me as the user. Now I can add some notes to the description if I want. I'll leave that blank for now. It also gives us the option to adjust DCP adapter output. So this is where you would want to set your parameters to match the SDI 12 settings if you're connecting to an external data logger. We also have our advanced logging options. We can change from normal to sample and hold or burst mode. We can also enable adaptive logging. I'm not going to enable that for now. I'm just going to go ahead and save and apply the template to the sond. Now it's going to ask if I'd like to start internal logging now. I'll go ahead and click yes. Now it gives us three choices here. We can set it to start logging at the next interval. We can set it to start logging immediately. Or we can pick a custom time in the future to have it start logging. I'm going to keep it at next interval. Now this is going to give us a live count of data being logged to the sond. And I set it to for five seconds, remember, so we'll get some data coming through here pretty quick. I'm just going to let this log, and then we can go back and download and review the data. 
To view our recorded data, we must first download the file from our XO3 SOND. Now you may think to go to the recorded data menu first, but this menu is actually for data that's already been downloaded to the PC, or for data that's saved through the live data function uh, in the software. But since we did a deployment, that data file is actually saved to the XO3 SOND, which we can access under the Instruments and Sensors menu. Now remember to click the XO3 SOND here, and then we can see all the files listed on the SOND's hard drive. Now here's our file for our test deployment. I'm going to go ahead and click Import. And now that file is saved in our recorded data on the PC. So we'll click Search. Now under the search for the data, we can specify the start date, end date, um, site name, instrument ID, file name, uh, username for whoever set up the deployment if we save that information. So there's a lot of ways you can narrow down uh, your data file. Fortunately for us, there's only one data file saved here and that's the one I just imported. So we'll view that recorded data. And here's all of our data sets from our test deployment. Now we can export these to a CSV file to view in Excel. Specify a file name. And it'll give us a notification that it's been exported successfully. And here's our data sets. And we can manipulate this data however we see fit. Now back to the software, I'll go back to the home screen again just for a brief review. So we covered the instruments and sensors menu here. We took a look at calibrating the sensors. We viewed live data, we viewed the recorded data, uh, went through a deployment. A few other things I'll mention here. This manage handheld button, again, is for managing the larger blue handheld, the, the older style if you will. The newer style handheld can be connected to via USB cable and it should show up in the instrument connection panel. Down here we have quick links to EXO University website, the online web store where you can order replacement parts or solutions, and finally there's this option to provide feedback. This takes us to a web page where you can submit comments, concerns, suggestions that our engineers can take and apply to future updates of the software. And that wraps up our overview of the Core Exo software. Be sure to check out ysi.com slash exo for the latest updates and news related to the Exo platform. And this is Zach Henderson, thanking you for your time and hoping this proves to be a valuable tool for your Exo SON management and your water quality data collection. Thanks again.